teachers and students. Today we are going to learn how to shade. Shading will give your drawings depth and dimension using value. So learning to shade takes practice and just like learning anything new, we want to break it down and start with very simple shapes. So we're going to try to isolate the aspects of shading and get really good at each thing first. So we're beginning with shapes that have flat planes of value. Notice these shapes do not transition from dark to light. So once we've worked with these simple shapes, then we'll move on to some value transitions and learn how to get your values to fade from dark to light. And once you've done that, then we can move on to some more complex forms. So the worksheets that I'm using here, you can find in my Teacher Pay Teacher shop at Inside Out Art Teacher, and I'll link them below. But you really can use any simple shapes that meet that criteria. So let's get started. So here I'm using a number two pencil. You can also use an HB pencil or any pencil that's lighter. And we're also gonna be using a 4B pencil for this demonstration. The 4B pencil, your lead is a little bit softer and you'll get some darker values. So I'm gonna begin shading and I'm not gonna go very dark at first. I'm going to try to shade lighter than what my actual value is. So we're looking at the value or the level of gray that I'm trying to create. And I'm going to begin by creating a value that's slightly lighter because we can always go darker, but it's very hard to go lighter once you've gone a little bit too far. So notice I'm using very short strokes. I'm not like shading really hard back and forth in like a line pattern. If you shade with large strokes and too much pressure, you get these lines and these scratchy lines in your shading that are really hard to fade out. And it's also very easy to go way too dark in value. If you compare these two values, see how the one that I'm shading right now is getting a little too dark. And now when I try to smooth it out, it's gonna get even darker, which can throw off the whole drawing. So as you can see, the shorter strokes and lighter pressure with lots of layers will give you much smoother, more accurate results. So this part of the, the, the drawing, the lighter values here, I'm trying to do that really soft value at the top. So I'm holding my pencil a little bit further back and I'm trying very hard not to put any pressure. I'm kind of just tickling the page. And, and barely pressing. And now I'm, I'm squinting my eyes here to try to compare these values. My value here to the right may be a little bit dark, but we're gonna go back and check that out again later. So now let's move on to a value that is in between the two that we just created. The one on the bottom here is a little bit lighter than the one to the left, but it is a little bit darker than the one at the top. So notice how I spun my page around a little bit here. That can really help you get into the tooth of the paper and kind of change your direction a little bit. So it's you can get much smoother shading if, um, if you need to. Don't be afraid to turn your paper a little bit here. So I'm going over these areas and I'm building up my values very, very slowly. So now I'm going to compare them and I'm going to say, is this value as dark as the value that I'm trying to create? And when I look very closely like that and I ask myself that question, I notice that it needs to get a little bit darker, but the one next to it needs to get darker as well. So having that base to compare it to is really, really helpful and a good reason not to go too dark too fast. Always keep your values a little bit lighter than you think they should be. So now I'm darkening up this left value a little bit and then I'm going to check and ask myself again, are my values accurate? So here, I'm going to look at the edge where one value meets the next. So in my drawing, I can see that this value needs to get just a little bit darker. So 
just looking and comparing and remembering to compare your values to your reference photo is half of the battle. It's so easy to get caught up in the shading and the smoothing of it and trying to get it nice and even that you forget to look. So really being mindful and remembering to check those things can help you tremendously. So once you've practiced these very simple shapes with flat planes a few times, then you're ready to move on to value transitions and start adding a new element of getting your values to fade from target dark to light. So just wait until you're comfortable with these shapes and then you can move on. So when you create value transitions, you're really doing all the same exact things that you did when you created flat planes of value. Only now you're just really focusing on the edge between where one value fades into the next and trying to get that transition to fade very, very smoothly. So you're still using short strokes, you're still working in layers, you're still starting with values that are lighter than your reference photo and building up your darks in layers. You're just really focusing. The only difference is you're focusing on the in-between values and really getting that transition to fade smoothly. And the number one piece of advice and, and the, the magic trick is really pay attention to that area in between and work in layers and go slow. And just remember that it's not gonna look perfect from the beginning. It's gonna go through some wonky phases where you might see some lines, but if you keep layering with light, soft pressure, it's going to look fantastic. And once you finish these small exercises, then you're ready to tackle some bigger, more complex forms. Good luck and enjoy your shading.